This car is a real car, but in the virtual world. It's incredibly exciting to design a car for a video game because you don't have the real world constraints. It's time to push the boundaries of what Aston Martin could be without the huge investment. However, you have to design the car as if it was a real car. It had to have a real engine, virtually real. It had to have suspension. We had to give a weight. We had to give performance figures, braking figures, because they could then tune all of that into the game. So the reality is all there, but just in the virtual world. There are elements on this car that may find their way into our production cars at the end of the day, so it was really important to see it as a physical model. If I go through some of the highlights, the front of the car, it doesn't feature a typical Aston Martin grille, yet you know it's an Aston Martin because we have a very, very definitive shape to the top of our grilles. We have a very pure, very simple side to the car, very dramatic, and then at the back of the car, our typical C-section lamp shape, if you like, where we've again deconstructed that and put all of the LEDs in separate light pipes, so it's incredibly futuristic. We do reach a huge audience with this. I mean, if you think about the amount of people that download and play on Gran Turismo, it's huge. And if you provide something which is the coolest of cool, then they're all going to want to download your product. And they, therefore, become part of your brand, and they understand your brand more. So it's, it's vitally important for us. The virtual world is becoming more of our reality. Most people will play this game and play the car in the game and then see this model, not the other way around, which is typical. So this won't be unexpected then because they'll be used to seeing it in a virtual world. So it is definitely the way of the world now to try things in a virtual way.